Okay, the final unit for data modeling. Work with Schema Builder. Huh, funny. It doesn't say in this unit you will learn. Did you do it in the other ones? Yeah. After this component, you'll be able to. And here, we just uh, go straight into it. Describe the advantages of using Schema Builder for data modeling. Use Schema Builder to create a schema. Am I pronouncing that right? For a given object model. Use Schema Builder to add a custom object to your schema. Use Schema Builder to add a custom field to your schema. Use Schema Builder. Use Schema Builder to create a schema for a given object model. Add a custom object to your schema. Add a custom field. So we're going to use Schema Builder to create a Schema Builder and add a custom object or custom field to your Schema. Okay. See your data model in action. By now, you and Angela have created a handful of custom objects, fields, and relationships. Fields are created in objects. And relationships. And we had the um, parent child relationship, what they call the master detail. I think if I'm remembering that right. And um, lookup relationships. Right. Okay. Your app's data model is starting to get a little more complicated. Uh, Schema Builder is a tool that lets you visualize and edit your data model. It's useful for designing and understanding complex data models like the one D'Angelo is building. Let's take a look. From Setup, search for and click Schema Builder in the Quick Find box. Okay, so let's. Okay, now I got that open. Um, so we're going to go to Setup. And we're going to look for Schema Builder. Okay. Now left panel, panel, click Clear All. Okay, do this. Check contact favorite offline property. Yeah, property. Okay. You should have the favorite object from the previous unit and the offering product of the objects from the previous challenges. You should see something like this. Oh. Okay, what's this happening? Okay. Okay. It sort of looks like that, but um, oh, here we go. It's, it's in that order. Okay, so a warning, you might have to move things around a little bit so they look pretty. But contact, 
I realize it's me. <coughs> okay, contact goes to offer and favorite, and then property. Okay, so this is in the light blue lines are lookup relationships, and the uh, um, solid red lines. I saw the maroon here. Looks like that's the um, master detail relationship. And the red lines next to each of these, those are the required fields. Okay, so if, if we delete offer, then property's gone because there's a master detail relationship with it. Um, I wonder though if, if something has two master detail relationships. Is that possible? Apparently it's possible because that's what it looks like we have here. Master detail relationship from favor to property and master detail relationship from offer to property. So if you delete one of them, you do both go away? I don't know. Notice that you can drag and drop these objects around the canvas. <laughs> it's really funny. I like how to like do that on my own to figure that out. Okay. Should have keep reading. This doesn't change your objects or relationships, but it can help you visualize your data model. Ah, this is what a data model looks like. In a more useful way. Schema Builder is a handy tool for introducing your Salesforce customizations to a coworker explain the way data flows throughout your system. Create an object with Schema Builder. Schema Builder is great for visualization, but you can also use it to customize your data model. For example, you can manage the permissions for your custom fields directly in Schema Builder. Just right-click the field name and click the manage field permissions. No, that's actually pretty cool. I've used other CRMs before. And so I feel like it's a little bit like the difference between like flying a paper airplane and flying um, like a commercial jetliner. It's so much more sophisticated. Okay, you can also create objects um, Using Schema Builder, if you prefer, you can create objects in this visual interface if you're designing a system and want to be able to revise all your customization in the spot. Let's see how it's done. On the left sidebar, click the Elements tab. Get out. Click the object and drag it onto the canvas. Okay, you can enter whatever you want. Call it whatever. Description. I don't know. Okay. I click save. Cool. A new object appears in your schema builder. That was quick. Next, let's add some fields. Creating fields with schema builder is just like creating objects. Hit the metaphor. From the elements tab, choose a field type and drag it to the object you just created. 
fields auto number formula, roll up sum rate, look up hierarchy, and answer detail. Until the object I just created. Mm, it's, uh, it's a currency. So the details are if you feel and click save. Cool. If you go back to the object manager, you'll see the new object shows in the same way your property offer and favorites do. So I have no whatever field. There it is. And I field some relationships. Dollar, currency. There it is. Help us. Okay, good. Sum it up. We've learned a lot in this module. Yeah. First, we talked about the data model and the database. We covered objects, fields, data records, and some of each of our Dreamhouse app. Then, we talked about relationships between objects and how you can visualize your data using the schema builder. None of that sounds like English. It's like a foreign language, literally. It's like, it just is. But it's okay. Um, we're learning a new vocabulary. As you start to dive into more advanced content, you'll see how custom objects and fields, you'll see custom objects and fields everywhere. Before you know it, you'll be a data modeling pro, happy building. Okay, you get ready, your challenge, use the scan builder to create a custom field for a property, for the property object. Custom field. This is the property object. We have fields on objects. Um, Dreamhouse brokers often visit properties with their clients. They want to see on the property record where the property is located. Use the schema builder to add a street address to the property object. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second while I do this. Okay, so I'm actually pretty confident on this one because it was just entering street address. Um, so I can see there that red line means that's required. I added that. That was really cool. We're going to check the challenge. Um, let's see how it goes. Thanks for watching. See you in the next module.